Before we start this episode, I'd like to let you know that Stave Decay 2's marketing campaign will begin May 1st, so prepare yourselves to see brand new gameplay details and also in-depth preview gameplay leading up to the release and maybe the occasional new feature announcement. It's a damn exciting time to be a fan. Also, prepare for exciting new enhancements coming as we move into the stage in our coverage series that we have been building up to for over a year. Thank you, let's begin. Hello there, and welcome back to another episode of the Stave Decay 2 coverage series. I'm your host, Arky, and today we will be breaking down, to the best of our ability, how the zombie spawning works in Stave Decay 2. Let me add that I will be explaining these systems with only the knowledge of a well-versed gamer. So excuse the oversimplification for any of you developers out there. So zombies are not hand-placed or static in any location. And while you're playing, there is a simulation bubble which contains a few systems. One of these systems within this bubble is the population management system, which is in charge of creating a dynamic zombie spawn that takes into consideration your location and whether you're walking or driving. This is the criteria the ambient population manager looks at when calculating the zombie spawns. The idea is to focus the game's resources into the area the player is in at any time, allowing for better game flow and an overall better experience instead of having thousands of zombie spawns happening all over the map, which could be pretty hardware taxing, resulting in a crappy experience. Zombies will be despawned and put into a probability cloud, which will maintain how they spawn in when you return to a location. One thing they mentioned is that hordes and special Z will not be affected by the despawning mechanism like all the normal Zeds do after leaving a location. Which means when you stumble upon special Zeds or hordes, but you may not have the means to survive this encounter, the system will save the location so when you return to the area, the special Zeds or hordes will still be there. Here is one quote I found to be noteworthy. I quote, One nice effect of calculating spawn locations on the fly is that we have no hand placed spawn locations for zombies. You'll never notice a zombie always spawns in one particular doorway or behind a specific dumpster. We procedurally evaluate thousands of locations per second in order to find the most appropriate places to spawn threats. Like most of our systems, the exact experience that each player has will be unique to them. End quote. So that's just icing on the cake, really. If I may add, I love how Undead Labs has taken every chance they could to create an experience that allows each player to have a unique gameplay experience. And I think with the moment-to-moment -moment gameplay, that will be something some players won't appreciate enough. This type of development should be applauded. But with that said, let's move on into a rapid-fire mode of information. So the game is always calculating your zombie kills within your current location, and will spawn enemies accordingly. So so if you clear an area, the area will stay cleared for some time, as the spawn calculator trickles in more zeds back into the area over time. Some areas can be cleared for good like outposts, for example, and some areas cannot. Another thing is zombie AI are not aware of loot locations and are not spawned according to loot density, but rather are spawned by a perceived population density. So the zed count in a town or neighborhood will have a more dense population of zeds than a rural farmhouse or field. So expect to have slightly interrupted quiet times out in Amish country, but expect some real trouble when you get to town. Another cool thing you can expect, for example, is say you're looting a military base, you may find that the Zeds there may have armor and may give you a run for your guns. So that's an interesting way to create emergent gameplay that fits the narrative style of a location. So that's it for the zombie spawning. I really do suggest reading the Gamma Sutra article to get a full glimpse into how Stave Decay 2's underlying systems work. A link to the article will be down below. So in the next episode, we will be discussing the risk versus reward factor when playing Stave Decay 2 and choosing your looting locales and also planning your Zed infested resource rates. With all that said, I hope you you guys are ready for the content to come in May. I hope you can take the time to like and subscribe if you're new. So the comment theme I'd like to see in the comment section is as follows. If you could choose to be killed by one freak type, which one would you choose and why? Also, I have a secret to tell you about. I'll leave you guys with this. Its code name is Project Intel. Take a guess at what it could mean in the comments. I will divulge what it is shortly. With that said, I love you guys. And I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.